Hello everybody and welcome to Massive Unboxing number four. Uh, this is, these are my Christmas models here uh, off of this Massive Unboxing. We have eight models to unbox today. So uh, this will be a, a very exciting unboxing here. Um, so, well I guess not all of them are from Christmas. One of them we got beforehand, but uh, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I once again lied, I do not have the Caribbean Max 8 for this massive unboxing. That's still on its way. I do have still uh, plenty of models that are on their way uh, still in the mail, so uh, those will arrive at a later date and I'll do separate unboxings for all of those. Uh, we have eight models to unbox here today, and um, let's not waste any further time and get into it here. Uh, so, I have a lot of pairs in this uh, massive unboxing. We have a pair of 757s, um, two Gemini Jets, uh, two retro models, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I guess I kind of ran out of pairs, didn't I? Uh, and I'm not talking about the fruit. So have plenty of pairs uh, in terms of the fruit. Uh, it's great fruit, by the way. So anyways, uh, after that really weird tangent, we will now get into the massive unboxing beginning with the American Eagle CRJ200 by Gemini Jets. So, for those of you who don't know, uh, this aircraft uh, left American Eagle's fleet for about the past two years. Um, they've not been flying it uh, with Air Wisconsin uh, or PSA, but it is coming back to American Eagle with Air Wisconsin this spring, and one of the routes they're flying it on is to Kalamazoo. So basically, I have to get this model. So, I did. And uh, so here it is. The American Eagle CRJ200. Uh, coincidentally, this one is operated by Air Wisconsin, so that was just perfect. 2016 release by Gemini Jet, as you can see on the back right there. There you can see the model inside and the flap. Go ahead and read that if you would like. Uh, yeah, standard Gemini Jet box, so it's the same pretty much. Except when they don't, like for Southwest or for UPS or something. We'll get the model out of the packaging here. Uh, this one was uh, from eBay, and it does not come with the plastic, um, as models do. But uh, we have the model inside still. I should say, like, a little plastic film thing. We still have the, of course, the, you know, you saw it, the plastic uh, cradle. We'll get resumed in on the model here, beginning with uh, the review now. Have the cockpit windows up here. You have the L1 folding door here, or, well, I assume... One of these says operated by Air Wisconsin. Um, this is aircraft was operated by Air Wisconsin. Uh, this model was made. Uh, American Eagle actually, back in um, 2018, before they had stopped flying the CRJ 200 as they continued operating with PSA, PSA but, um, in 2018 they stopped flying with Air Wisconsin. Air Wisconsin was uh, supplying the uh, US Airways CRJ 200s. And uh, then when they merged with American, American had both. Uh, Air Wisconsin, uh, PSA, and SkyWest. So um, now this one is, uh, is uh, well, of course, they're going to be going back to Air Wisconsin, so they'll, we'll be, this will be accurate. So it's good that this one's not PSA, because <laughs> uh, that means it'll be more accurate. So, anyways, here's the, uh, the L1 boarding door uh, with the stairs, of course, because uh, that's what they do on the CRJs. Uh, the L1 door has the stairs. Uh, so you don't, they don't have to use jet bridges or even air stairs because you can just walk right up onto it. Uh, coming from back in the old uh, biz jet days for Bombardier or Canadair. Uh, we have the American Eagle titles down here, the new ones. Um, there was a pretty good price on the old livery as well, which honestly I prefer, but it would be less realistic. And this one was also cheaper, so... I decided to get it now before the price really skyrocketed on these as American is getting them back. I'd rather just get it now and uh, wait until they return. So hopefully American continues using these because I'm going to want to use this model now for a while because uh, well, they're getting them back and hopefully it's not just like a one year thing. <laughs> they come back with Air Wisconsin and then they retire the CRJ200s. Uh, but I guess they retired the E-145s. So there's no real re replacement for that, for that aircraft, but uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, but yeah, we have down here the American flag uh, registration November 428 off of Whiskey, I believe. Uh, kind of hard to see there on the camera, but I think that's what it is. 
We have the wings here, the overwing exits. Uh, here's the American Airlines tail. Or, well, we have the little luggage door under there. Under the engines. Here's the American Airlines tail on the CRJ200. Looking very beautiful indeed. The color on this model is not the best I've ever seen, but it's also not bad. So, um, I don't think Gemini did a horrible job on the color here. The landing gear, our standard CRJ200 landing gear, you know. The CRJ200 landing gear, since it's such a small plane, it's not the best in terms of detail, but it gets the job done. So, very nice model here by Gemini Jets. Um, and definitely a good one for the collection here. They will be flying to Kalamazoo in the coming months, and I might as well get it now uh, and for a cheap price than wait until I do start flying to Kalamazoo and uh, get it for a more expensive price. So, uh, pretty good deal for this one right here. So, now we move on to the second model. This one being the, I'm very zoomed in here, the Republic Conveyor CB580 by Gemini Jets. Uh, so this one is an early release by Gemini, uh, 2019 actually, wow. Uh, those are like 2020 or 2021, this is back, back to 2019. So, um, yeah, I think Gemini still has a few of these lying around. I needed to get this for my retro Kalamazoo airport. Uh, as I did use to fly these back in the 80s to Kalamazoo. Uh, so a standard Gemini jet box here. Uh, there's no need to go over it as you pretty much saw the same with the American Eagle. This one just has the straight line going across rather than the curved line, the swooped up curved line that they uh, used to have. But we will get into this one. This one does have the plastic in, as this one is a new model and not used as the CRJ200 was. So we'll get this guy out of the plastic cradle, put that away. Get it zoomed in here on the Republic Convert 580. So, uh, really nice model here. Uh, I mean, like, even look at, looking at the wings, they're really reflective. That's really cool. So, um, really cool model right here. I don't have any uh, Convairs yet, this is my first one. But we have the cockpit windows up here and the nose landing gear. Uh, it has a little bit of a printing for an aerial there, I'm not sure. It's not wanting to focus. I'm not sure what that would be, but it does have a little bit of printing there. I assume it just went up from the nose and kind of made that shape. But Gemini doesn't have any molds to make anything like that on their models. We do have a single antenna up there. Uh, we have the L1 door right there. I um, assume that would be the boarding door. Uh, we have the Republic titles up on top. Uh, and also we have, of course, the cheat lines that go all the way down the aircraft, looking very nice. I really, I really like this livery uh, and the colors. The colors are amazing on on the uh, old Republic North Central uh, liveries. So this one's looking very nice indeed. The only issue is, and uh, this one has been noted, uh, that the the uh, the turbines here are, are really close to the ground. The fan blades, you can see, they're really close to touching the to, to touching the ground. And the fuselage, which uh, that's not super realistic. This one's also a little bit tough to spin. This one spins pretty well, but as you can see, they're really close to clipping the ground, which uh, I don't believe that was realistic, uh, as then you'd have prop strikes all the time on these Republic uh, CB580s. But I guess that's just a mold thing by Gemini Jets, um, but not too big of a deal. Of course, uh, moving for the back, we do have two emergency exits over the wings and the exit paths right there, uh, looking very splendid, of course. And then the registration right here, remember, uh, what is that? Set so near 728, I'll just go to the box, 728 Romeo. Um, we have the American flag back here, and of course the um, tail, I don't, I don't remember what the, the logo is called on that. Um, it was the same logo that North Central Airlines had. Of course, they were pretty common in the area. And, you know, Minneapolis, Milwaukee, uh, JJ Skippy has it for his retro uh, Sioux Falls, retro FSD brand. Um, is it, uh, North Central had a big operation there. Um, so, yeah, really cool there. Uh, a really cool model in general. Will be great for retro Kalamazoo. Uh, or Retro Kazoo, as I'm kind of calling it now, uh, just for the heck of it. Um, I mean, the airport code 
if you include the kilo for the uh, for the ICAO code, it is uh, kilo or K A Z O. So kazoo, and then you know, there's the kazoo. The instrument has two O's, and you know, uh, retro kazoo. Uh, it's <laughs> you can kind of get there. Kalamazoo also has two O's, so. Yeah, got a stand hole in the bottom too, and uh, the Joan Edger logo. That's the same for the American Eagle Series J two hundred. But yeah, really nice model. I really like the reflective wings on this on the back half. It's even better. You can definitely see that they're very reflective over here. Uh, kind of unique about this model is uh, that's not something you typically see on a Joan Jet model. But I guess that's just how they made the wings back in the day, and uh, Joan Jet Joan Jets wanted to incorporate that uh, in this mold. That looks very very nice. So, great model here by Joe Night Jets will be great in the 80s Kalamazoo updates. It's kind of why you saw my uh, community post there uh, requesting uh, which uh, update you'd like to see next, a, an 80s update or uh, uh, the 2011 update. As of right now, it, uh, I will be ending it at the, well, uh, what's the, the December 26th, that's when I'm going to be ending the poll uh, at midnight. So, uh, whatever the vote tally is right now, it is uh, six to three in favor of 2011. So we'll see what it is at the end of the day. But I'm guessing it's probably gonna be a 2011 update that you'll see next, so stay tuned for that. But we will eventually do an 80s update, probably 85. Uh, I could also do 81, but that'll only be with, with that Republic uh, CB580. But we'll probably do some more updates in the future for Retro Kalamazoo, including that model. Our next model here, I might have to move the camera a little bit further back because it is a bigger box. Uh, one that will be very key in future updates. It is the NG Models Asia Pacific Airlines 77200 by NG, oh, I already said it, NG Models, 100 scale model right here. So of course, since it is NG and their boxes are all unique, we will go over the box in, in detail here. Uh, we have the Boeing 77200 uh, titles up there. We have the uh, digital image of the aircraft right there. Uh, the logo of the tail going uh, up the box, or I guess that's like kind of in front of the tail, but also the tail logo. On the side right here, you have the Asia Pacific Airlines. This is the old uh, titles right there. Another CGI of the aircraft. Um, once again, the titles in green this time, or well, in white uh, on the green background. And the same as the front is on the back. Yeah. Pretty simple box uh, for NG standards, but you know it looks it also looks really nice. So I I couldn't have done better. So I think that was a, a good box decision by NG. This model is also requested as I get it out of the box here. Uh, back in an old Mile High Aviation uh, video, uh, he did request this model to NG, and it was finally made. So you know that is uh, very nice to see right there. And I knew uh, when they eventually made it, I would have to I would have to get it. And it took a little while since the release, but I did end up getting it in here. And here it is out of the box. And I'm already noticing an issue with the landing gear. Um, that's not good. And we have our collector's card here. But it is not in the styrofoam, not in the, in the plastic, anything. It's not here. We don't have the, we don't have the wheels. Well, that stinks. We don't have... Jeez. I mean, it doesn't affect where the model sits or anything, but that's just really unfortunate that we don't have the wheels there for the gear. They're just... They were not in, even in the box. Oh, that is... That's, that's a shame right there. Um, but we will... We'll get into the review without the without the wheels. That's just a shame, man. But uh, we'll get into the review here. We have the cockpit windows. Uh, here's the L1 door. Uh, Asia Pacific Airlines titles up here. These are their old titles. Uh, the current livery has them in uh, just the Asia Pacific in billboard titles going like down the fuselage, not all the way down, but the majority of the way down, uh, at least to the end of the wings, I think. Um, and we have the uh, luggage door right there. You can kind of see the windows are just blocked out. This was formerly a passenger aircraft, uh, passenger configuration, and it's now been turned into a freighter. Uh, but you can still see the overwing exit paths, which is kind of funny. 
Uh, we have the engine down here, which might be tilted up a little bit, but that's not too bad. Uh, I can't complain with, about that. When we have a wheel missing, bo both wheels missing, um, we'll back half the landing gear on the right side. Um, all the other landing gear are good and it rolls fine, but dang, that's just, that's just too bad. You have the winglet here, which is just completely green. You can see the other side right there. Not, no logos or anything on the winglet. Uh, pretty much nothing until we get back here to the registration number uh, 757 Quebec Mike. So this is a U.S. registered aircraft, which would make sense since it flies to Guam, primarily from uh, Honolulu. It also flies uh, here from like Chuk and maybe Kosrae sometimes as well. I have seen it, uh, maybe not Kosrae, but definitely Chuk and also maybe uh, Hong Kong, I think I've seen as well. Uh, but here we have a little uh, logo on the tail. Looks like a little star there. Kind of looks like an orbit with something that might be the Earth. I don't know. Or the moon. Uh, but pretty interesting right there. I don't know the whole backstory behind the logo of it. But it's just a really essential model that I need for Guam because this does fly to Guam like all the time. Uh, almost every day of the week. Uh, we do get an Asia Pacific Airlines 757. That does have the new the, the newer livery, but you know what? Uh, this is still a very nice model. I won't have to use the ASL Belgium. Some five two anymore, so we'll see if I can find another connotation to use that uh, in, because that's really the only situation that I've been using that model in. Uh, so now it might just be a shelf sitter. That's just my completely blank seven fifty seven two hundred. That's kind of a, a weird model, but uh, one of my oddballs that I got last year for Christmas actually. So that's like this is the one year anniversary of that model. Um, so that's kind of funny right there. But uh, it would have been a good model by NG Models. Uh, the mold is pretty nice. I, I like the NG757 mold. It would have been a good uh, model by NG. I hadn't forgotten my wheel there. That's kind of that's kind of infuriating. But we'll go on uh, to another NG model here. This one being the Sun Country 77700. This is the newer, not the newest NG models release with the the old livery because I don't need that one. I already have the Panda version, but this is the, uh, anyways, this is the um, NG models, uh, their current 777-700, I guess, uh, that they have in the aerial type spot livery. Uh, I have talked about this aircraft many times as being some of its only remaining 777-700. They've retired all the other ones. This is the only one left. Um, the box here is pretty unique. It has a faded Sun Country logo right here, a pretty big. And then we have one uh, it's kind of fading from orange into blue on this side, which is kind of interesting. Of course, this model doesn't have the the blue logo on it as the old old livery does. I wonder if the box for the new one is going to line up with this one in any ways. I I'm not going to be getting that model because I already have the Panda Models version, so it's not really worth it. But you know that is pretty cool. On this side, it's not the same thing. And, you know, Sun Country logo on this aircraft right there. We also have uh, Lake Superior, so that is the name for this aircraft. This Sun Country did that kind of as a gimmick for like a year or two, and then they kind of forgot about it. I did fly on one of the planes uh, with one of the lakes on it, but I don't remember which one. Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't remember which, which lake it was. But uh, we'll get this out of the box here. Here is the collector card. So this one in blue. All my other ones are in the gray or green color, including the Asia Pacific Airlines. But that one is in blue. We'll get the model out of the plastic cradle here. And here it is, the Sun Country 737-700. Looks like one of the wings is a little bit... Eh, that's, that's a little bit loose right there. I'm not going to pull it out yet. I might pull it out after the finishing of this uh, video. So I can glue it back in and keep it safer in the model. I have another, that seems to be, sorry about that, it seems to be an issue with uh, some of these NG737-700s. I also had that issue on my Maryland 177-700, which I never fixed by the way, so I might have to do that. I also used to have the issue on my, um, uh, the Southwest Canyon Blue 700 with splits, and I did end up fixing that one. But anyways, uh, we will start out front here. We got the cockpit windows, the Lake Superior uh, name of the aircraft down there. Uh, we have the uh, very short nose gear, of course, with the 737s. Here is the L1 door and the Cambria logo right there. 
uh, Cambria, the owners of Cambria bought uh, Sun Country Airlines out of bankruptcy back in 2011. And they kind of uh, turned Sun Country into a relevant player again in the market here in MSP and in the United States. So uh, really grateful for them. Uh, the logo, the Cambria logo looks a little bit dark. I think it was brighter on the actual aircraft. Uh, at least on my Panda models version, it was a lot brighter than that. So uh, that's probably a little bit in inaccurate right there, but I don't know, it might be accurate to the actual aircraft. Um, but uh, what isn't accurate actually is the, or maybe now it is, I, I don't know what, I don't know what's going on with Sun Country right now. Sun Country is a weird airline. I've said that numerous times on the channel. But according to the latest jet photos photo, the L1 door here on the Sun Country Airlines uh, 737 700 here, uh, number 713 Sierra Yankee, it has an orange door that would belong to a Tide Pod livery aircraft. So it's just a blue aircraft with an orange door, uh, which L1 door, which makes no sense. Um, all the other doors are blue, and that one's just orange. So I don't know if they plan on ever repainting that one. I guess I'm guessing not. But that's just really funny that they did that. Um, it kind of makes you question some country airlines, uh, but just, yeah, they're 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 a great airline. Um, they, yeah, they're 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 a great airline, um, except for you know, being budget airline and being uncomfortable and sucking and stuff. But you know, they're my hometown airline, so I I love them. They're they're a great airline. Sun Country is a great airline. You should, you should fly them. Try try them out. I, I fly them all the time. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of getting tired of flying Sun Country because I'm going to be flying them. Well, you, you'll see. I, I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of a trip announcement here after the, the review of this aircraft. So I uh, kind of spoiled that, but uh, that's a different story. You have the aerial text font titles up here. This is my first proper aerial text font livery aircraft, as I do have the Transavia hybrid livery, which does have the aerial text font, but of course it is a Transavia livery aircraft. Not a real Sun Country aircraft, so this is kind of like my first one with the aerial text font. We do need an 800 in this livery that has not been made by any manufacturer yet. Uh, also, I would like to see a re-release of the Tide Pod livery with the 40th uh, anniversary uh, little sticker up there. Because Sun Country does have, uh, are they are painting their aircraft in with, with that on it now. Or, I don't know, that might just be a sticker on it, or it could be paint. But they're going on really fast, and I, now a majority of the 737-800s and the Tide Pod livery have that logo. They're not doing it on the old livery aircraft. But anyways, uh, we have the single overwing exit here and exit paths. Uh, here is the engine, which doesn't have any logos on it whatsoever or anything. This is the kind of thing that I hate about the this livery. Uh, there's just nothing. There's the, I mean, you, on the old one, they had a little blue Sun Country logo up here. This one has nothing. Um... You can see the uh, the tail. This one is the updated Sun Country logo uh, that has the sharper S. It's not quite as bold as the other one, and uh, the other one is not as sharp turns. Uh, so that one is the the new logo. Now one of the things that I didn't notice, at least on uh, on on this new uh, new Ur livery, the Aerial Textmont livery as the uh, old Sun Country livery used to have this orange line kind of uh, go up and stop uh, and it, at its thinnest point and it gets to be just a border of the white paint and the blue paint, which kind of makes it look like a runway uh, extending outward uh, with the sky um, being the blue part on, on top and then the kind of like a runway and white on the bottom. But now they got rid of that, so it was like a good photo op for the old livery Sun Country uh, models and of course that's not non-existent on the Tide Pod livery because that's all orange in front. But I hate this livery. <laughs> that's an example of why the Tide Pod livery is personally my favorite, um, just because it incorporates the most uh, color and you know diversity. It's 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 a weird livery and it's there aren't really any other airlines that can compare to it. Uh, but this one's just plain. This is stupid, bad. Uh, we have two antennae up here. Of course, the registration was said earlier, number uh, 713 Sierra Yankee, American flag, and then Boeing 7700 logo down there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. As I said, there's not much else to go over on this one. Uh, landing gear roll fine, just the wing that has the issue. And of course, uh, the antennae on the bottom looking very nice here for NG. No stand hole though on this aircraft, so I can't put this on a stand. But uh, pretty nice model here. Can't complain about this one. 
So the trip announcement that I teased earlier uh, is uh, <laughs> a funny one. So on January 16th, uh, MLK Day, I will be doing a, a single flight of one way to Eau Claire, Wisconsin on Sun Country's new service there. And it'll be my first time flying solo. So I will be flying on Sun Country on their new service that just began to Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Um, probably on a 738, probably not on this model, but or this aircraft, <laughs> definitely not on this model, that'll be fun. Uh, and also probably end in tragedy, but uh, maybe it maybe be worth it for the experience. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we will be, or at least I will be, I think I'm not going with anybody else except for the, everyone else who's on that flight, but I will be on that flight to, uh, January 16th to Eau Claire, Wisconsin on the Sun Country Airlines, uh, only a 45 minute flight. I don't know what to do on that flight. Uh, I kind of feel like I want to do something special on it because that is my first time flying solo. I can't stream on the flight because Sun Country doesn't have Wi-Fi on their planes. Uh, I might stream in the terminal. I probably will do that before the flight. Uh, plan on getting there plenty of time ahead because I have nothing to do that day. It'll just be a, a fun day to do nothing uh, and be at the airport, hang out. So this will be in Terminal 2, unfortunately, so I won't be as much to see. But I'll probably do a few laps around the terminal so you can just check it all out. I'll bring you guys along with me. Uh, it can kind of be an update to my uh, Terminal 2 tour video that I, has become really popular now, actually. Uh, keeps on getting getting views. Uh, most of my video, most of my videos that are popular, they go up and they're really popular when they first get released, and then they just stagnate after that, and no one else watches them. But that video has kind of gained some more traction lately, so uh, that one's getting quite a lot of views. So uh, thank you all for that. But um, yeah, this is uh, that'll be a cool trip on Sun Country Airlines. It'll be my fourth. Uh, excuse me. Uh, it'll be my. I still have, well, four Sun Country flights left to do, uh, this, at least that I know of, uh, so, now one, well, one of those trips I haven't announced yet, so I'm not going to talk any further about it, but I will be flying on Sun Country Airlines four more times over the next few months, so, stay tuned for that. I want to fly on Delta some more, because I kind of feel bad for not flying on Delta for a while. They are our hub airline, after all, uh, but Sun Country is just a lot cheaper, and, uh, as I have family who doesn't really care about the airline, just cares about the price, uh, that, 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 that appeals to them. So flying on Sun Country a lot lately, so I want to mix it up a little bit. That's why I'm mildly excited about flying Spirit Airlines. I hate Spirit Airlines, but you know what? It'll provide some good content, um, especially if an engine falls apart or something. So <laughs> I'll... Looking forward to that. that. That trip is coming out very soon, actually, after the time you're uh, time you're watching this. Just a few days. Uh, if you're watching this on the 27th, which I believe that's when this is coming out, it will only be uh, two days until I'm jetting off to Florida. So, yeah. Uh, I'll be flying out on, on Sun Country to St. Petersburg, which I do have a decent chance of flying this plane right here, because this 700 seems to fly a decent amount to Jacksonville, Jackson, for some, for some reason it's Jacksonville, Jackson, and St. Petersburg fairly often. Um, actually, I was supposed to fly this plane to Fort Myers, uh, but it got stuck in St. Petersburg. So maybe my luck will turn around and I'll be able to fly it to St. Petersburg. I will have to fly on a 700 once more, but I, I'm really hoping as well that on one of my flights, on, my, on one of my four St. Country flights at least, I get to fly in a Tide Pod livery because I have yet to fly a Tide Pod Sun Country livery and it's pissing me off because I keep getting on the stupid aerial tax pod livery and it sucks and it's stupid and it's boring and it sucks. So uh, we're going Tide Pod or go home. Not really, but that's kind of what it feels like at this point. Next model is, you can't, be, you can't tell by this box, but it is the Panda Models Southwest 737-300 in the Silver One livery. So this is one of the Waffle Collectibles exclusives by Panda Models. Um, they just, eh, not just recently, but back in like August or something, they came out with this one. And um, I gave my mom a choice of one of these Waffle Collectibles exclusives to get, and she chose Silver One, which kind of is kind of surprising, but not really at the same time. Uh, it is a very cool model here, and uh, very exciting to unbox it. I'm not gonna go over a review of the box, so it's just pretty boring. It is a 
waffle collectibles exclusive. But anyways, uh, here is the model out of the box. It's very reflective, as you can see. Uh, this is a chrome. Uh, well, the name would apply. Silver one. Uh, chrome aircraft here. Uh, really unique special delivery by South Australians. No one else has done it, uh, to my knowledge, at least in 1400 scale. I think Herpa did. I, actually, I've seen Herp, uh, Herpa's 1500 scale version of this aircraft. Um, it is at Scale Model Supplies uh, in St. Paul. And I did see it there. Um, but this is the only 1400 version, I believe. So this will be used in retro updates uh, when uh, I, c I come to it, uh, when, or when it comes to the channel eventually. For Providence, I think, uh, these flew to Providence. Um, but we will, uh, we will begin the review here with the cockpit windows. We also have the little uh, nose shield up here to protect from uh, reflecting sun. As that probably was an issue uh, on these uh, silver aircraft. Um, with the chrome aircraft for American and this one for Southwest and such. Um, it's a good thing that they have that there. Um, I have the silver one down there uh, with a little heart. Uh, of course, that's Southwest's whole thing. I don't know if I can get a good zoom on that. You can kind of see it right there. Looking very nice there in Southwest font for that stuff. It is a very reflective. That is, it is insane right here. We have our little antenna up here, um, and it's kind of hard to see, but you can kind of see it a little bit. It's basically just Southwest logo or Southwest livery, if you just made it all monochrome. So, monochrome silver. So that's basically what it all is. You can still see the lines though for where the different colors of red and orange would be, and the engines can can't be silver, but they are gray. Um, that the color looks pretty similar to the actual color of the model. We have the registration right here, November 6 to, uh, what is it? I need the box again because I can't see on this reflective livery. 629 Sierra Whiskey. Um, and then we have the South Desert Gold tail, looking very nice. Um, so my second Desert Gold tail model, as I also just got the uh, New Mexico one livery and that has the Desert Gold tail. We have the overwing exit paths down here on the wings and also the little things in the back of the wing. <laughs> I'm trying not to get my fingerprints too much on this one because it is, you know, chrome model. You don't want to do that. Here's the bottom of the aircraft. Got the landing gear stand hole. Uh, no logo on the bottom. And I also have a single antenna down there. But yeah, pretty simple model to go over, but a really beautiful one here by Panda Models. So they did a great job on this one. Uh, it'll be a very unique model in the collection, and uh, also plan to use this in future airport updates. Uh, Retro Providence, perhaps, uh, maybe RSW, uh, when that I eventually get around to doing that. I probably just still need a, little, uh, a few more models to do Retro RSW, but uh, expect a Retro Providence airport update out in the near future. Next model, we have a Delta, the NG model's Delta, 747-200. Uh, so this one is uh, one of the newer models by NG. Again, this is kind of the summertime time frame, but um, finally got it in here uh, as a Christmas model. The box is pretty unique here. We have kind of the Delta logos forming an increasing sized arrow across the, the box. Pretty unique. Um, same thing on the back, but we just have the Delta widgets all around it basically. And this is in the Mariano Rivera Hall of Fame livery, so that you can see the logo that is on the nose. Uh, you can kind of see it up there, full focus, there we go. So this is uh, that livery, because I'm a baseball fan, and I'm not a Yankees fan, but I respect Mariano Rivera for his craft and being the best closer in the MLB, probably. Um, I think that's pretty hard to dispute. So I respect Mariano Rivera for that, even though I'm not a Yankees fan. Also, we got to love the Game 7 of the 2001 World Series. I mean, that has to be the best moment of his career. Blowing a lead to the Arizona Diamondbacks in only their fourth year of existence. That was amazing. This one does ha have all the wheels on it, so that's good to see. We also have a green collector's card. Move all the plastic out of here. It's bad for the oceans. Uh, also, the styrofoam. Uh, we'll get it zoomed in on the model here. Um, and looking very nice indeed. Here we'll begin with the review. Cockpit windows up here. The little uh, Mario Rivera 42 logo down there. Uh, we have the uh, L1 door, uh, the Sky Team logo, L1 door, uh, Delta widget, and all the Delta logo up there. 
we have the nose gear down there as well. Also, the model goal is very nice. <laughs> the engine models, they, they know what the engine models knows what they're doing with their landing gear. All their models roll roll really yeah, really well. That's tough to say. <laughs> roll really well. Uh, we have two domes up here, SATCOM or Wi-Fi. Um, we have two of them and an uh, antenna in the middle. Here's the engine, uh, no logo. Uh, and then the winglets also have no logo as the Delta 757s don't have that. Um, I have flown a Delta 757 once uh, and it did not have winglets, which is kind of maybe twice. Uh, but I don't remember it having winglets, so that's kind of cool. Cool experience. We have the, uh, I guess you can call that the L3 door. I'm not sure if that's an emergency exit or if that would qualify. I think that would qualify as an L3 door, but wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? You guys can let me know. And this is the L4. Uh, we have the American flag up here, and then the registration number 702 Tango Whiskey, and the Delta Widget uh, on the tail right there. So other than the little logo up there, this is just the regular Delta Airlines livery, and it will be used at plenty of airports, including NSP, RSW, um, St. Martin, you name it. Uh, you name one of my airports, and it has a 50% chance of including this aircraft at least once. So uh, we'll eventually use it at uh, at least the three airports that I named and maybe other airports in the future. So gorgeous model right here by NG Models. I really enjoy it, uh, or I really like it. I'm, I guess I will enjoy it. Uh, no Delta belly though, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, I'm guessing the actual aircraft doesn't have that and that the NG Models just didn't include it. Oh uh, well, yeah, we have two antennae down there. It rolls really nice. Uh, so they did a good job on the roll for this one. So uh, yeah, a short review here, but a very gorgeous model here by NG. I really like that one. Um, will be used extensively in the future. Seventh model, penultimate one. We have the Prime Air 7378-4P, going to a freighter here. Uh, so we do get these quite often at MSB. This is from Waffle, as you can see. Uh, we do get these quite often at MSP. Uh, kind of interesting back of the box here. I'm kind of just doing a little tour of the box. Uh, looks like one of the Amazon warehouses. Pretty simple box, but a uh, very nice one here to house uh, this uh, model. This is by Phoenix, by the way. I don't think there's a Phoenix logo. I guess they, due to licensing, they weren't allowed to use it. But, uh, Little trouble with the flapper. As I was saying twice, these do fly quite often MSP uh, under some country. And um, so we see these a uh, fair amount, and they fly in from places like I think we see them from San Bernardino and um, I don't know, some other cargo airports, you know, where we see a lot, a lot of primary, that's where these come in from. But uh, a very, very nice color on this one. Uh, nice pickup here. So we'll get it started up here. We have the cockpit windows. Uh, of course, L1, or well, there's the L1 door. But we have our nose gear. That's what I was trying to say. I don't know why I came with that one door. That's normally what I follow with after the cockpit windows. But we do have the little registration on there, which for some reason, just like back here, is outlined in white, which kind of looks ugly. Uh, on the background, that is not white, but uh, whatever. Uh, we have the uh, operated by Sun Country up here, so that is accurate to what we would see at MSP as we get uh, the Sun Country operated Prime Air 737-800s, not the uh, IRO Airways ones. So that's really cool that this is an actual Sun Country one. Oh, actually, I'll, I'll actually lift this, uh, this aircraft up on uh, um, FlightAware, and this one hasn't flown in like two years, so that's great. Uh, <laughs> Just like the other one, actually, both both of the ones that were made by Phoenix have not flown in a while, which is probably why they're using these two models uh, and not current one if they couldn't get the licensing, uh, because then they might get in trouble if they're using one that's currently flying. I don't know. That's my suspicion. We have the luggage door, or not the luggage door, the cargo door. I should be filling this with luggage. Uh, and we have the Prime Air billboard titles right there. Um, this aircraft is kind of inverted from the 767, which is a 
uh, white fuselage and then blue titles and then this one is uh or are they blue i think they're blue I, uh, yeah they're I'm, yeah they're blue. They, yeah they're blue right <laughs> i'm gonna get confused because they might be i think they might be gray but i think they're the blue um not i don't think they're this bright but i think they are blue i think that yeah i think this is just in red i don't know why i just confused myself i just do i do that sometimes my apologies so yeah, it's, this is just reverse of the 767 uh i think this version looks better uh just because it has incorporates more color um but you can also see the windows and doors uh emergency exit doors uh blocked out uh because this is now cargo version uh we have our engines down there all in blue and uh the winglet has the same kind of design as the tail back here as i just whack it um so uh that's that's a pretty neat design on the winglet and moving for the back we have the registration once again november 44h charlie charlie uh, and then the uh, little Amazon arrow on the tail. So pretty simple livery to go over here. Uh, the landing gear roll, quite nice. Uh, also on the bottom, they do have an Amazon belly. A little nice to see right there. Makes up for the Delta belly that we're missing. Also, all the antenna here that uh, Gemini don't like to include the, the bottom ones back there for some reason. But... Now, it is a Phoenix 737-800, which is not, they don't, they don't have a great mold. So you can kind of I can kind of display that here. This one is a lot better than my Copa Airlines one, but there is still a little bit it's still a little bit bench there in the left or the right side wing, the um, starboard wing. From our perspective, it is on the left side. So that's a bit unfortunate. That is an issue that Phoenix has with the 737800 mold that they do. This is smaller than other 737800s by other manufacturers, so I don't know what's up with that. So I wouldn't recommend Phoenix, uh, the uh, 737800 mold, but when it comes to situations like this and the Copa uh, MLB livery, then I would make an exception. I would go for it. Maybe also with Ryanair, I might get a Ryanair. Uh, I'm torn between the JC and the Phoenix one because the JC has a better, um, better mold, but the Phoenix has a registration that would be better suited for if I were to do a Riga airport. So. There'll be more on Riga in the in the in a future video. I mean, I haven't announced it publicly yet, but <laughs> I've hinted at it so much, so I'll let you fill in the blank. Why am I unboxing this already? I didn't even go over the box. Final model we have a KLM Phoenix KLM seven eight seven nine. Um, so this is a, a nice pickup here. Uh, this is what flies to MSP during the winter. Uh, seven eight nine. And then during the summer, we get the A330. But I can use this during the winter season for an MSP. And it is a very nice model indeed right here. Or a very nice boss and hopefully a very nice model. Phoenix has a chance to redeem themselves with this one. In which addition, of course. And this one also is in the 100 years uh, livery. A little 100 years logo up there. Just like my A330. So we're matching. Look at this out of the box because I'm so eager to do that. My my voice is running dry here, so I'm gonna try to get this video over with so I don't lose my voice. Um, which would be great. Uh, I'm also trying to kind of record this fast because I just got boosted, uh, my COVID booster, and I don't want to get sick all of a sudden because I don't know if that's gonna be an issue with that. I'm hoping not. My arm might be a little bit sore, but whatever. I want to just get the video over with before my throat starts hurting too bad uh but anyways we'll get into the review here of this gorgeous model so this will be my first klm aircraft my well my first of two uh one 400 scale models at least with the uh and one uh, i guess my one 400 scale if you were to count that this is also my first one with the new livery it just has the blue line swooping down i prefer the old one honestly i think this is just useless uh that they made this new livery just with that um I think the old one just looks a little bit cleaner, but it's not a big deal, honestly. I don't really care. I can go either way, because it's basically the same livery anyways. It's still better than their old, older one, with the thick blue line, in my opinion. I like the shade of blue a lot better. It's kind of teal blue. I don't know why this is looking so weird and, and dark. It shouldn't look this dark, but... Um, in person, it looks a lot more vibrant than what the camera is showing, so my apologies about that. 
We have the cockpit windows up here. Sky Team logo, and I assume that says uh, Air France uh, or Delta Air France down there because that's their partners. The nose gear down there uh, and the little red line displaying that uh, how far you can turn the nose gear. Uh, thanks for such aviation for pointing that out, and that's how I was able to learn about that. Uh, learn something new every day. The KLM Royal Dutch Airlines titles up here above the windows, the first class section. Uh, we have whatever that says. Okay, I want to see what that says under there. I'm assuming it might be a city, uh, a Dutch city. Maybe not. It's the name of the aircraft. I'm not sure how to. Or I'm also looking at the box. That clearly says Air France KLM, not Delta and Air France. Because, uh, well, KLM and Air France have the bigger um, uh, uh, connection. What, what's the word that I'm looking for? I can't, I can't find the word. I'm running out of words. Um, <laughs> they have the bigger uh, alliance, I guess. Alliance would work. Um, but the, that says, I, I don't know. I think it's in Dutch, and I'm not, I don't know Dutch. I love to learn Dutch. Um, the Netherlands is a great country. I'd like to visit someday. I've only been in Amsterdam Airport, uh, but I'd love to visit uh, Amsterdam someday. I love their uh, biking infrastructure and such. Um, big fan of that. We have the L2 door here. The 100-year uh, little titles up there. I suppose not titles, so they're not words, but you know, you know what I mean. I'm assuming that's not on this aircraft anymore, but it still is very applicable. Uh, we have the engines down here, which looks like they're touching the ground, but that's only because I'm using the, the paper here, and uh, it's not touching the ground, I promise. <laughs> also, kind of blame my camera angle for that. Uh, the landing gear could roll a little bit better. They don't roll super well, but I don't intend on rolling this too far. Well, I will roll it back to being centered here on the camera. We have the uh, sweat wings here on the 787 that uh, go up like that. It is a, a very nice bend here on this mold by Phoenix. Uh, as I noticed that the NG1, which may be more realistic to what it is like just sitting at a gate or something, but they're just flat on the ground, or well, not flat on the ground, but you know, they're, they're, they're pretty flat, which um, I think this might be a little bit more realistic. Of course, it's not like the Hogan mold or Herpa mold where the the wings like go up. <laughs> They're practically a, a, a second story on top of the aircraft, but I think that's a, a nice bend right there for this mold. I really like this mold. I don't. I don't believe I have any other Phoenix seven eight sevens. I don't have many seven eight sevens. Just the the Qantas flaps down version by Gemini uh, seven eight nine. 7810 Vietnam by Gemini. I'll do my collection video. I, should, I shouldn't I should be smiling my collection video. That'll be coming out very soon. Um, at the end of the year, my last video of the year will be my collection. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we have, that's, that is that is 3D. So we have two domes here, SATCOM and Wi-Fi, or one of the, the other way around, I don't know. We have our little, two little antennae back here. We have a registration, Papa Hotel, uh, Bravo Hotel Charlie, uh, and then we have the Dutch flag, uh, flag of the Netherlands, and the EU flag right there. And then under that we had the Flying Dutchman, which is on the KLM aircraft, and back here uh, Boeing uh, 7879 logo, and the KLM logo on the tail. So a uh, beautiful model right here by K KLM and Phoenix. Um, I like the KLM livery a lot. And I think this model looks absolutely fantastic. So, uh, yeah, that'll do it. So, eight gorgeous models right here. Bring them all in to do the concluding shot here. As I managed to do this whole video in one clip, as long as my iPad doesn't run out of storage here at the last second. So I'll bring all the models in here. This isn't going to be very organized in any ways, uh, in any way. But... Uh, and kind of get it looking 
good here. So yeah, here are the eight models in this massive unboxing. Uh, so happy holidays, everybody. Uh, whatever holiday you are celebrating, I hope you have a great time this winter. Um, and uh, happy collecting, of course. So we'll do a quick review of the models here. We have the American Eagle CRJ200 by Gemini Jets, uh, Republic Convair 580 by Gemini Jets, Phoenix KLM 789, 100 years uh, titled. Delta 752 by NG with the Mariana Rivera sticker down there, Hall of Fame. Primer 77800, uh, Boeing Converter by uh, Phoenix, like that one. Uh, Panda Southwest 77300, Silver 1. NG Sun Country 77700 in the Aerial Taxpont livery. And H Pacific Airlines 77200 in their old livery. So yeah, that'll do it for this massive unboxing. Thank you all for checking it out. Uh, this will be the last massive unboxing of the year. Hopefully some more coming next year. Uh, so eight more new models to add to the collection. And as I said earlier in the beginning of the video, I do have more in the mail on the way. So um, stay tuned for unboxings of those. Whenever those come in the mail. I have one that might be coming here in like the next day or so. So uh, we don't really know. USPS, because of the winter weather here, it's been horrible. Uh, it was supposed to arrive before Christmas, and now it has just been delayed, so uh, it has not shown up yet. I don't know when the model will, so I decided to go ahead with the massive unboxing, just get it out before the model shows up, so I can kind of incorporate this massive unboxing in um, holiday time. I would like to get this out on the 25th, but unfortunately I was hanging out with family on that day, and it just wasn't really possible to do it, so two days later is not too bad. So with that being said, thank you all for checking out this video, and I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, good night, I'll feed it in.